was a big mistake. But now you find it is a love song of sorts to sleep alone at night. But one with a much hipper beat. Since he was a child, Simon Illa has had a love affair with music. I probably had to be about 14 or 15. Um, for Christmas, I got this box set. It was Metallica of all groups, and they're amazing. Sitting with my friends and watching this tape over and over again of them making their record, and I said, man, that would be cool. That's the job I want. Today at Gamble and Huff Studio in Philadelphia, this newcomer is hoping to join the elite ranks of the legends that have come before him. I'd love to have a couple of platinum plaques on the wall. A couple of Grammys would be nice. Yeah, you know, nice, nice house, nothing too crazy. Blender Magazine recently christened the 30-year-old music maker, arguably Philadelphia's hottest producer. Well, I had, you know, I was kind of surprised. At, well, I'm not surprised at that. Well, maybe I am. Simon has already grabbed the attention of hip-hop heavyweights Scott Scorch and Timbaland, who recently signed Simon to his label. Third days, I still wake up, I'm like, I sign with Timbaland's people. But behind every great love song lies some heartache. And Simon certainly has had his share. Born with osteogenesis imperfecta, a bone disease which makes bones weak and prone to fractures, Simon is confined to a wheelchair. Beyond the physical, he also knows emotional pain. His mother was murdered when he was only three. His father wasn't around much and years later committed suicide. I've been through some personal things, you know, with my family and, you know, and of course my grandmother always telling me, you know, you can do whatever you want, you know, as long as you believe in it. That can-do attitude and a one-way ticket landed him in Philadelphia. When I got here, I had very little money. Um, I was staying in a hotel. A couple of nights, I stayed over at 30th Street Station and just kind of acted like I was asleep. And I just thought, well, if I'm going to do this, it's now or never. He was sitting downstairs in front of the building in his chair with a CD in his hand. And uh, he was talking to one of our a &R people. And I was coming into the office. And I'm looking at him and I'm, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking. And then I heard the CD and it just blew me away. So I went to his studio and watched him work and watched him at his setup and, and his environment. Phenomenal. That uniqueness is exactly the type of creativity he tries to foster on his records, which is why recording artists like Dave Tolliver are drawn to Simon. He knows what he's doing and he's not afraid to come in there with an established artist and tell them his views. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the music. So I always say, the music sounds the same with your eyes closed. Because people always say, do you think somebody's letting you in because of like your situation? But I don't let people do that. Like if I sense that at all, I don't, I won't work with them. I'm a music producer and that's what I want to do. I don't want someone's pity. I want to make a hit record. When he gets out there really, 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 you won't even be able to see him. There are guys that'll come and go because trends come and go, but Simon has the staying power because he's got the musicianship behind him. And I'll keep on trying, even though I've been told that the odds are all stacked up against me. When I go fetch a Grammy, it's gotta be like, wow, he made it, he made a really great record. And that's all I want. You know, and I don't want it, to, it can't be for the other reason. Because if it is, then I didn't do my job.